now want to simplify this fractional expression. We know that we must factor first. So the numerator can have 8 divided out or factored out as the greatest common factor. And in the denominator, we can do the difference of two squares. And then we can see that there's a common factor of x minus 2 that can be divided out of both the numerator and denominator, leaving us with 8 over x plus 2 as the simplified form. Now when it comes to addition, we need a common denominator and x and x minus 2 each go into the product of x times x minus 2. Now we have to see how to convert these fractions. This first fraction did have a 5 up above, but down below we multiplied by an x minus 2, so we have to multiply by an x minus 2 also up in the numerator. And the second fraction had a 3 up in the numerator, and that denominator changed, multiplying by an x. We multiplied by an x up in the numerator there also. Distributing in the numerator gives us 5x minus 10 plus 3x over this x times x minus 2. And we're going to combine like terms now to have 8x minus 10 over the x times x minus 2. And if you have some foresight, the answer can stay there. You do need to check, however, that if you did factor the 2 out of the numerator and get 4x minus 5, that the 2 would not cancel with anything down below. And so we don't really have to leave it in that factored form. So either one of these with an or between them would be an acceptable way to write the solution. <coughs> Continuing on here, let me straighten that up there. Sorry about that if you're getting dizzy. Now we are going to simplify. I do not see anything that cancels inside. I do notice, however, that the 50 can break down into a 25 times 2 up above. So before I rationalize, I'm going to rewrite this as 5 root 2x over down below, the pair of y's comes out as a y root z. Now I'm going to rationalize the denominator. It's easier once you've simplified first. Multiplying by root z over root z. So down below, we're going to have y times root z squared, which just pulls out the z. <clears throat> and up above, we've got 5 root 2xz multiplying the radicands together. Find the slope of the line perpendicular to this one. This is kind of a trick. You really don't have any math to do. y equals 5 is a horizontal line, so any line perpendicular to it will be vertical, and the slope of any vertical line is undefined. So there's really no math to do. It's just a matter of understanding the principle. Number 22. I cannot add if the radicands are different, but I can try simplifying each first. The, 20, the 50 becomes 25 times 2, which breaks down into a pair of 5's times the 2. And the 18 breaks down to a 9 times 2, and that 9 breaks into a pair of 3's times the 2. When these numbers come out, they multiply with the coefficient in front. So 5 will multiply with 3, making 15 times the root 2. And then the 3 will multiply with the negative 4, making minus 12 root 2. And now we can add these together because they both have a root 2 within. And we can subtract and get and when I said add, I mean add the opposite, we get 3 root 2. Solve this system. Well, since the first equation is set up as a y equals, I want to do substitution, substituting the first equation into the second. That will give us 4x minus y, which we'll substitute in, equals 17. And the y that we're substituting in becomes the x minus 2. We're going to have some distribution to do on the left there. So this will become 4x minus x plus 2 equals the 17. 
combining like terms, we have 3x plus 2 equals 17. We're then going to subtract 2 on each side. 3x will equal 15, and therefore x will equal 5. That's not the end of the problem. You need to take the x, substitute it into the original problem. We're going to get 5 minus 2, which is 3, so y will equal 3. So there's our values, and we could write that as a point 5 comma 3. Okay, and by popular demand, I give you another mixture problem. Okay, but this time we're not mixing liquids as we did way back at the start of this video. This time we're mixing together, it appears, uh, desktop and laptop computers. Bob bought two computers, one desktop and one laptop before finance charges. The laptop costs 500 less than the desktop. Bob paid for the computers using two different financing plans. Okay, here we go. Percentages go on top. So 3%, I'm going to write that as a decimal this time. For the That is for the desktop. I'll put a D inside. And 5% will be for the laptop. I'll put a little L inside to remind me what that is. The total finance charges for one year are $335. I'm going to write that $335 at the top. How much did each of these cost? What was the amount? Okay, the laptop is $500 less than the desktop. So the desktop is D. The laptop is D minus 500. And it's asking us to, to solve for the desktop D. So we've actually got the right variable in this problem to begin with. OK, let me move that upward. There is only one variable, so we only need one equation. We will be going top times bottom plus top times bottom equals top. But I'm going to multiply through by 100 first, moving the decimal over to and actually putting a decimal in and move that over to also. So our equation will be top times bottom, 3D, plus top times bottom, 5 times D minus 500, equals just the top, 33,500. We'll do some distribution here. It looks like we're home free at this point, however. 3D plus 5D minus 2,500 is equal to the 33,500 on the right. We're going to combine like terms and add the 2,500 on to both sides. That is going to give us 8D on the left equals 36,000 on the right. And dividing through by 8, we get D is equal to $4,500 for the cost of the laptop.